Donald Trump gets incredible news and devastating news within minutes of each other. I'm sure his emotions are all over the place as Democrats and the deep state seek to bring him down and keep him away from the White House. Representative Mike Turner is being asked to step down after using his authority to trick the American people on behalf of the Russia-Ukraine war and so much more. I've got some really incredible insight for what's going on in the country today. So thank you so much for joining me this evening as I bring you guys the news. Also, thank you guys so much for liking these videos. When you hit that like button, it tells YouTube, spread the word, get the word out, and it really, really helps me. So thank you guys so much for always doing that. All right, now, remember yesterday I told you how Republican Representative Mike Turner used his committee chair authority position to leak rumors that Russia was going to attack the United States and Ukraine from space. Then I told you how Florida Representative Matt Gates said this was a nasty trick to scare Americans and Congress into giving more money to Ukraine and skipping giving money to the Texas border and the Arizona border. Well, now... Over a dozen House Republicans have come out and publicly chastised uh, Mike Turner for this dirty trick. Some are saying you cannot cry wolf as a member of Congress that we are about to be attacked and that you should step down from your position. Now, I want to know from you guys, what do you think? Was this a dirty trick to get money for Ukraine? Is this an abuse of authority? Is this crying wolf and scaring the American people without cause? I want to hear from you in the comments. Let me know, dirty trick or was this appropriate? For me, I think this was a dirty trick. And I think this guy should step down. I mean, how desperate are they to give our money away to Ukraine that they would lie and pretend that the United States of America is about to be attacked? It's absolutely despicable to me. All right, now, Russian national and Putin, Putin critic Alexei Navalny has died in a Russian prison. This was Vladimir Putin's biggest competitor when it came to running for president of Russia. For those that are unaware, um, Mr. N Navalny, Alexei Navalny, was the Russian opposition leader in Russia. He was incredibly outspoken about government corruption, Vladimir Putin corruption, and getting uh, Russia into a good position so that they could trade with Europe even more. Now, in 2021, Navalny posted a YouTube video exposing Vladimir Putin for allegedly using fraudulently obtained funds to build his own real estate empire. That video garnered over 120 million views. That same year, Navalny was arrested after returning to Russia on charges that he uh, allegedly was politically motivated in trying to embarrass the president of Russia. Now, unfortunately, the Russia prison service announced that he had died today after he randomly fainted which was a shock to those around the world who respected his journalism. Now, we all knew that this was going to happen. Unfortunately, it has happened. Hey, Raphael, thank you so much for the super chat. All of the neocons and neolibs are going crazy. Yeah, they are. We need to vote them out. They need to absolutely be removed from any position of authority. All right, now, journalist Tucker Carlson is now being accused of pushing Vladimir Putin propaganda around the world because of his recent interview with Putin and has been outright uh, condemned for the interview. But even, even Tucker Carlson is saying Putin's treatment of journalist Alexei uh, Navalny is horrific. He said, it's horrifying what happened to Navalny. The whole thing is barbaric and awful. No decent person would defend it. So because he had the courage to interview Vladimir Putin, they're now trying to label him as a propagandist, which means that the deep state is going to be going after Tucker Carlson. Just you watch. 
Hey, thanks, Jay Wilburn, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. By the way, you guys don't have to do those super chats. I'm happy to come on and, and give you the news, but I did want you to know that I that I see you. Uh, but let me let me get through this news broadcast really quick. Now, President Joe Biden gave a speech following the news of Navalny's death, in which he honored Navalny for exposing the bad things of the Vladimir Putin regime. He stated, but make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. What has happened to Navalny is yet more proof of Putin's brutality. No one should be fooled. Now, this is really interesting. And let me know what you think in the comments. So Joe Biden is literally saying that Putin locking up his political opposition makes Vladimir Putin an evil person. But we have proof that Joe Biden is working to get Donald Trump, his political opposition, jailed for over 700 years. So Joe Biden is literally saying that Joe Biden is evil for trying to lock up his political opposition. I don't know. Am I, am I reading this wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, while I respect Biden for acknowledging Navalny, I wish he would have also acknowledged the death of American journalist Gonzalo Lira, who died in a Ukrainian prison because he was critical of the Ukrainian government and Volodymyr Zelensky. So Zelensky is literally no better than Putin, and Biden is no better than either of them. An American citizen journalist died in a Ukrainian prison because he dared to say things like, Ukraine is going to lose the war, or Ukraine can't beat Russia in war. Now, I'm not going to act like Gonzalo Lira was an angel. Uh, I, I'm just not going to. I'm just literally pointing out the hypocrisy of what Biden is saying and what he's doing and what Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine is doing. Now, in a recent update, uh, it has emerged that President Biden's uh, cognitive health is going downhill quickly. Special counsel Robert Hur chose not to indict Biden over classified documents due to his observed poor memory and his lapse of memory. After Hur's report, Biden criticized him for highlighting his failure to recall the timing of his own son's death, Bo Biden. Now, contrary to Biden's claim of being unfairly questioned about his son, NBC News reports it was actually Biden himself who mentioned his son's death during the interview with Robert Hur. Now, attempting to recall events at his Virginia home between 2016 and 2018, Joe Biden accurately remembered the date of Bo's death, May 30th, but was confused about which year it was. So not only did Biden forget the year, but he also forgot that he forgot and then tried to blame it on uh, Robert Hur in order to make himself look better. The reality is Joe Biden has dementia and he is forgetting critical and vital parts of his own life, his former position as a member of Congress and as a vice president. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if he's already forgotten that he's president of the United States someday. All right, now, this is, this is really terrible. The uh, Trump-hating judge in New York City, New York Judge Arthur Enigron, has just announced that former President Donald Trump will have to pay a $355 million civil fraud uh, fine for allegedly inflating his net worth to get a better interest rate. Despite previous claims that Trump would also be banned from doing business in New York, uh, instead, he is going to just be told he can't do business there for several years. Now, Trump maintained his innocence and has stated, crooked and corrupt judge Arthur Enigron ignored his loss at the appellate division and came out with an outrageous $355 million fine against me using a statute that has never been applied like this before. Now, by early next week, we already know that Trump's 
uh, lawyers plan to appeal this. This is a political hit job, especially after hearing that no banks lost money, every loan was paid back, everybody made lots of money off the business deal, and not a single bank complained about this. It was only Letitia James, the attorney general of New York, who ran on a platform of getting Trump that needed to keep her political promises, and it looks like she has. Now, here's what I think is really going on. Letitia James is trying to bring Trump to his knees so that he can't run against her favorite president, Joseph Robinette Biden. The amount Trump is being charged is ironically and luckily almost the exact amount of cash that Donald Trump has on hand. Even in the appeals court, you have to put up 10% of the money until you win, which means that Trump risks losing $35.5 million in order to try to reverse this in an appeals court. But what else is he going to do? $355 million? It's absolute insanity. Now, Judge Enigron went on record saying that Donald Trump isn't as bad as Bernie Madoff. He's not really a bad guy, but his lack of contrition means that he is borderline pathological. These were the exact words of Judge Enigron. But why would Donald Trump feel bad about a crime he didn't commit? I mean, if I was accused of something and I didn't commit that crime, I wouldn't have any contrition. I wouldn't feel bad. And it wouldn't make me pathological to not feel bad about something I didn't do. Now, I think this judge hates Donald Trump. And I think this because he's been very vocal about hating Donald Trump. His wife has been very vocal about hating Donald Trump. Letitia James has been very vocal about hating Donald Trump. Now, Trump, sadly, may have to liquidate multiple prized golf courses in order to pay the fine. So he, he's going to have to put up the $35.5 million and seek an, uh, an appellate court to try to reverse this crazy and definitely biased judgment against him. Now, while Trump's trial in New York didn't go his way, his trial in Georgia has absolutely gone crazy. It's been flipped on his head after District Attorney Fonnie Willis was accused of having a conflict of interest in prosecution by having a sexual affair with her co, uh, her, her co-prosecutor. With that being said, people are now calling her a hypocrite for comments she made in 2020 while trying to get elected. When asked why she was qualified for the position, Willis stated, because they deserve a district attorney that won't have sex with his employees, because they deserve a district attorney that won't put money in their own pocket when it should go to benefit children, because we deserve better. These are her exact words. Now, it goes without saying, but it is very ironic that she is now accused of the very things that she said she was not in order to get this job. All right. Now, uh, President Biden finally visited East Palestine, Ohio, where that train derailed a year ago, and then the government blew it up and spilled toxic forever chemicals into the air and also into their drinking water. He was greeted with F you and get the F out of here at every single location he visited. The people literally chanted for him to leave and to never come back. But I don't think the people remember why Joe Biden couldn't be there in the first place. He had to take a vacation. I mean, these people are so rude saying F you just because he didn't show up or give them any kind of help or assistance because he was on vacation. I mean, come on, give the guy a break. He had to take a vacation. I mean, at least the people in Hawaii were understanding that he had to take a vacation uh, before visiting them. I mean, you guys can literally look this up. The government completely screwed over our brothers and sisters in Hawaii. And why? 
because Joe Biden had to take not one, but two vacations before making it over to Hawaii. You can fact check me. That's absolutely true. He literally gave these people the middle finger and then went on vacation. And now he's shown up a year later and they're literally like, dude, get out. Never come to Ohio again. But it's not like he needs Ohio in order to win the presidency. Oh, wait, you do. All right. Now, uh, by the way, let me know in the comments, is Biden the best president or the worst? I want to hear from you guys. I, I, I'm, I'm literally in the middle of doing this show or else I would come on to write that I believe he's the worst president. But I, I want to hear from you guys. Best or worst? Raptor Life says he will go down in history as the worst president, I swear. Thank you for the super chat. And I completely agree with you. By the way, uh, let, let me go. Let me go back. There's a, a point that I missed with District Attorney Fannie Willis, and all you, know, you guys, this is terrible. I mean, really, really terrible. Fannie Willis, the District Attorney, going after Donald Trump. You know, the one that had an affair with her co-defender, broke up a marriage, paid her boyfriend under the table in cash nearly a million dollars, sent him to have secret meetings with the White House twice. She was visibly shaken in court. And then people realized that, you guys, this is terrible. She was literally wearing her dress backwards. I'm not making this up. You, you guys can go search this. She's, she's so stressed uh, that she put her dress on backwards. Now, why is she stressed? She's stressed because of her lies and her cover-up and her lies about her cover-up. I mean, this is literally the person trying to ruin Donald Trump's life. And now that she's on the other side of the persecution and the prosecution, she's literally such a shaky mess that she she put her clothes on backwards, you guys. It's just sad. Like, I don't wish this on her, but she did bring this on herself. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Let, let me know. Uh, did she bring this on herself? I, I, I think she did. All right. Someone says, stop speaking such rubbish, Stephen Gardner. What rubbish? This is all true. You can literally Google this stuff in the news. All right. Now, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia has been teasing that he and Mitt Romney were going to run for president. However, today he said after officially researching things for months, it wouldn't be a good move. He's not going to run as a third party candidate. Um, I think what he realized is that he was going to lose and waste a lot of other people's money. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has spoken with Paul Whelan, the former Marine that's been detained in Putin's prison over in Russia. Whelan was arrested back in 2018 on allegations of spying on Russia, which is a long time to be behind bars for an American citizen. Despite the seemingly lazy effort to get Paul Whelan home, Blinken stated, our intensive effort to bring Paul home continues every single day, and they will until he and Evan Gershkovich and every other American wrongfully detained is back in America with their loved ones. Well, I hope you guys are telling the truth and you really are trying to get these American citizens home. All right, now let me say hi to you guys. Uh, William McDaniel says, this is not rubbish. Yes, exactly. Thank you. You can look this stuff up. Just Google Fannie Willis dress on backwards. Just Google Joe Biden goes to East Palestine, Ohio. Just Google $355 million fine by Trump hating judge uh, Arthur Engeron. You can look up everything that I'm sharing with you guys. It's not a lie. I only tell you guys what's exactly going on every day in the news it's checked by uh, multiple sources, and you can search it yourself. So anyway, this is my update for today. I just wanted to come on, share the news with you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you would give this video a like, that tells YouTube to share it, uh, and that would really, really help me out. Also, I'm going to put uh, a video from earlier with Colonel Douglas McGregor that I definitely think you guys should check out. Hey, thanks so much. I love you guys so much. Have a great weekend and I will see you on the next video.